Good morning and welcome to Commerce Week. My name is Sumilan Tinge and I'm from the Commerce, I'm sorry, I'm from the marketing team. Joining me today is Sarami Ramasojana, who is Head of School of Commerce. We have Hendrik Pelane, who is part of the academic team, as well as Helen Mukudu, who is also part of the academic team. And we also have our guests who will be joining us shortly, who will talk about themselves, their businesses, and how they fit into the Mill Park family. And for those of you who are new on this platform, just a few things to note. We have our interactive chat screen on the right hand side of your screen. So please keep on like say hi, pop in your questions, we'd love to hear from you. We also have three polls running. Please pick them out and vote and we'd love to hear your views and what you would like um, to hear from us in the future and whether we should be in contact with you. We also have an ask a question box. This box will enable us um, to see all your questions that you will be posing to us as well as our guest speakers and we will um, attend to those as uh, we, when we get to our questions and answers segment. And right now I'm going to hand over to Sarame to take us through the School of Commerce and how we fit into the Star Year group. Over to you Sarame. Thank you, Samira. I can just show this presentation from your side, please. There we go. Okay. Thank you so much, Samira. And let me just thank everybody for participating in this first ever Commerce Week, uh, where we are discussing the entrepreneurship in South Africa and around the world and the impact thereof. But before we go into that detail in terms of our panel discussion, I think it's, it's important that we, we look at the Mel Park as a whole and where do we fit in terms of you know, the group structure from Stadio's perspective. Uh, can you go to the next slide, Samira, please? And then, okay. Mel Park is part of Stadio. As you can see, we are a standalone company entity and we are a subsidiary of Stadio. Stadio is a listed company on the JSE. Uh, I think it was listed in 2017 for the first time, and we have been part of the group ever since. Below that, you also see the Stadio, which have uh, other brands, SBS, Southern Business School. We also have Embere and uh, uh, Prestig Academy. So those brands were consolidated into one Stadio brand and then we also have after on on my right hand side that entity deals with films uh, media and other other aspects so we have those three independent entities that are operating on their own and then all of us form part of the whole group of studio holdings which is listed so if you come to the mail pack as school of commerce I'm proud to say Mel Park Education was started in 1997, almost 23 years ago. And uh, we have grown from offering very few certificates by then until now where we offer even doctoral degrees levels, at, at the, I mean the PhDs. So for us, we have seen a significant growth and it's a, it's a really uh, positive move to see that growth over the years. So what do we do? We provide Africans the opportunity to reimagine their future through flexible, accessible, supportive, and lifetime business education solutions. So if we talk about flexibility, our programs are flexible, where you choose different streams on the BCom or on the BBA. We also have a variety of other certificates. We have high certificate in management. We've got advanced certificate in management. We have distance learning as a study mode as well as distance learning online. So we have those that flexibility wherever you can choose a program that suits your needs and the study mode that you like to, to do. And also, you, we make it possible, when, when I'm coming to the accessibility, we make it possible to everybody to study wherever they are around the world. We've got students in the US, uh, 
uh, two weeks ago, we were welcoming our unique group of students from Standard Bank who are also from other different African countries. So for us, we are very proud to, to make it education accessible, uh, irrespective of the location through distance learning mode. Coming to our commerce department or school of commerce, we've got a group of professionals in, in, the, in the faculty. We've got accountants, tax practitioners, Asia specialists, economists, entrepreneurship. And some of those entrepreneurship we'll see as we go along through the discussions when they explain their journey of entrepreneurship and the experiences that they got. And for us, that makes us proud as the School of Commerce. Mm. We all know that our country, guys, has so many challenges, including unemployment, uh, poverty, and very important access to education. So we believe that us as Park, as an institution, we have a role to play to cap these inequalities. Therefore, we believe that entrepreneurship plays a very critical role in addressing these issues. As you all know, I mean, over the past two years, we have these unfortunate events. I mean, starting with COVID, where a lot of entrepreneurs were affected. I mean, so many businesses have to close down. And to make things worse, earlier this year, or I mean, in June, we had those unrest where, you know, we had uh, lootings in KZN and in Houten. And I think it's going to take some time for, for these entrepreneurs to, to recover from that. So I believe that having these collaborative uh, events or webinars where we discuss and we brainstorm and um, we come up with solution going forward, as Mel Park School of Commerce, we have a role to play in order to assist our nation, the government, to, to recover the economy that has taken the toll because of the pandemic. So I hope that you enjoyed today's session during these panel discussions with this, uh, our guests today, this morning. And now I'll, I'll, I'll let me uh, welcome everybody officially and say, enjoy the session. And as Samila said, this is a panel discussion. If you've got questions, please type. There's a chat box where you can type and then the panel will take it from there. Um, I hope you enjoy and benefit out of, out of this discussion this morning. And I'll now hand over to Somila to take us further with the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarame, and um, thank you so much for taking us through that and also just explaining what today is about. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to have a chat um, with our entrepreneurs. What today is, is really a celebration of our own, celebrating um, those students that are part of Mopark, studying with us and also who are associates of Mopark and just to get to know them a bit, how they've been managing running their business during these times and Hendrik and um, Helen will be taking us through those and on screen with us today we have uh, Pam Wenya who is um, an entrepreneur and also a student at Mopark she is uh, a farmer, so she will get to know a bit more about her and how she does this wonderful farming. And she also is a supplier of their local spas in her area, spa supermarkets. So um, we're looking forward to get to know you, Pam. We also have Homoso um, Moraka, who is not a stranger in this platform. She has been with us uh, for quite some time and we've had an opportunity to get to know her a bit and I think today is just really a discussion on how she has also survived and how she has taken her business from strength to strength. We also have Widu Melo Soge who will be joining us shortly. Um, she owns an e-commerce business. So hey, take a lot, watch out. Uh, she will tell us more about her business and how she's also doing it. And so guys, like today, as I said, it's really just a discussion. Let us know, we would like to hear from you, the questions that you have for our speakers. And yeah, and we'll get to answer those during our, our question and answer segment. So I'm going to hand over to Helen and Hendrik to interview our guests. Have fun, enjoy. Thank you so much, Sumila. 
Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Henry Pilani and I'm a lecturer in the School of Commerce and we'll be rocking the boat, uh, myself and Helena. So we'll be engaging with our beautiful guest speakers today. So we have Homozo, uh, we have Pitumelo, we also have Pam. So ladies, welcome on board. It looks stunning and thank we you. would like to thank, thank you guys you. for taking thank out you, this Henry. time out of your busy schedule. We really appreciate it. So I would like sure. to... Um, uh, to to just uh, ask the first question. Um, okay, so this one I'm going to direct it to we uh, to 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 Humuzo. So we just want to understand. Can you just tell us a bit of, about your business, like the nature of your business? What do you sell? Uh, the service that you render? If there are any your target market, so so that we can fully comprehend exactly what your mm. business is all about. Thank you again um, for having me on this platform. I think, yes, I am quite familiar with it now. Yeah. Um, so I'm the owner um, and CEO of Manolo Flowers. It's a flower company that deals with um, corporate flowers and indoor plants. So how we have, I have positioned Manolo Flowers is I've positioned it to the corporate space. Um, mm -hmm rather than just um, having it at two individuals the positioning is to the corporate space so we deliver flowers and service um the indoor plants to, to 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 corporate companies on a weekly basis for their reception areas um and also for the the, the boardrooms in any event they would have so so that's more of the positioning that manila flowers has um incorporated throughout the years to 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 be in the corporate space and deal with the with the bigger guys <laughs> all right yeah, thank you for that so so I, I just have a quick question um i just want to understand how do you get to keep the flowers so so fresh well we do go to the market um the market which is in the cbd we go to the market about three or four times a day um a week depending mm. on the, 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 how busy we are. So mm -hmm. we are part of an auction. So the, the flowers right. you buy via an auction, right? Um, so okay. we, 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 buy, we buy in bulk for the, from the auction, and then we put it in our warehouse um, um, in, a, in a cold room. So that's mm. how they, they, they keep fresh. They, they do have a lifespan. Um, mm. The winter season is much better. It's a good season to have because they last a bit uh, two two weeks or so. Now with the with the summer being thirty degrees, you do have to change them on a regular basis. Um, mm. But in, in the corporate space, it becomes they do have the longevity because you got your, you got your acorns in there, so it's much mm. of a cooler environment for them. So yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Komoto. And and so Pam, I understand that um, you are in the farming business, right? So can you just tell me yes, more? Andrew. Yes. Can you just tell us more about it? Good morning, everybody. Good morning to my colleagues. Um, it, farming is the basics of life. I mean, yeah, the, the good old place where everything is grown from scratch. You see it come off the ground, and then eventually. Yeah. We, the homutos getting it on auction and you see it on the supermarket <laughs> yeah. shelves yeah but we are the ones that slave away and toil on the soil okay yeah. they, I, I don't think there's anything else to describe about farming <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think uh, that was mouthful uh what you just uh, mentioned to us right now in terms of what goes around um in the farming sector so so thank you so much for that and then we also have um we two mellow the lady if ever you don't feel like uh, going to the mall you just sit in front of your laptop and then you buy whatever that you want to buy online so we two mellow can you just please tell us more about the e-commerce um, Hendrik, I think actually we do Melo is having some connection issues. So um, we can continue with Komoto and Pam in the meantime. And as soon as she's able to join us, she will do so. I'm assisting her in the background. Okay, no problem. It's fine. Uh, Helena, I will hand this uh, 
the driver's seat over to you for now. Thank you, Hendrik. Uh, welcome, uh, ladies, our students. We are very proud of you. It's very nice to put a face uh, to your name. You see the names when you are marking assignments, when you are presenting lectures. Now that we can see you, we really know that uh, whatever we are imparting to you surely is working. So we are very proud of you and we welcome you. Um, I'll just move on to our next question. Um, I'll ask them. You said you are the farmer and it's a very, you know, it's in black and white. There are no hidden uh, angles about farming. It's either you're doing it or you don't. How did you decide on this business? Um, farming was always a passion of mine. I think it's something that I got from my parents. They okay. always loved to do farming. I still remember growing up uh, in the township, my dad would have a small chicken coop in the backyard right. where he would grow um, and we would learn how to grow chicks and how to feed them. Mm. And they, they, there was always a, a tiny patch of vegetables. It was always very fascinating to me. And always when we would go to the rural areas, I always loved to see how everything was grown, you know, to, to be there and help the grandparents grow, mm. plant and grow millies, and then to eventually go on school holidays and eating millies that you yeah. know you grew. So yeah. um, it, it's something that I, I took on. I think I, I lurched onto it and I always wanted to do it. So eventually mm. when I needed to decide what I wanted to do, uh, I thought, well, in my retirement, that's the kind of thing I want to do. I would okay. like to do farming. So okay. uh, it ended up happening not the way I planned, but um, it got accelerated <laughs> more than I thought. So okay. I ended that's up good. doing this now. So I acquired a piece of land um, with the intention of slowly developing it and getting to break into farming slowly but hmm. that didn't happen like that. I got thrown in. <laughs> so we can really call you a daughter of the soil. Definitely, I think <laughs> I would be honored. <laughs> okay, you really, you sound like a daughter of the soil and, and that's that's very challenging, very interesting, mm -hmm. very thought pro uh, provoking, a young lady like you deciding to take that route that is not the norm for most um, mm. young yeah. young persons in this day and age so we we are proud of you um oh, let you. me i must say i'm flattered that you call me young but thank you <laughs> <laughs> you are young <laughs> <laughs> i would like to move to to komoto komoto i just want to know how did you decide on your flower business um well for me it's not as as passionate as pem um said her her story mine was yeah. just more of a coincidence um my mom did love flowers when we were we were also staying in the townships in alexandra she used to bring she used to be this odd lady that brings fresh flowers to to the townships it was such a taboo um so when she actually left um her job then she she started selling um flowers and actually doing gardening um in our small patch also so i think that's the the resemblance from from the small patches that we yeah. we grow we grew from and um i opened just up a, a, a business from her uh, at for her at cipc and she just couldn't run it she was just she was not that academic to run it um neither was i but i think i just didn't know the basis um, okay. of writing a business through through just reading and being younger at that time. Um, I mean, yeah. this is 10 years ago. So, so yeah, the coincidence came, came, came like that, where I, after opening up the, the CK1, um, then I decided just to run with it and contact, contact um, potential clients and talking more about fresh flowers. And it's literally, bloomed before me it was unintentional but now it's very intentional <laughs> yeah yeah okay, okay. Uh, that, that's very interesting it really is um it's it's uh, you, you you can never really tell sometimes where you start off and where you where you end up and i'm liking the fact that 
you used an opportunity or exposure that you had in your upbringing to yeah. monetize it and here you are now you've got a, su a successful business i yeah. just wanted to find out from you um if you allow me uh, you told us that you you save mainly corporate uh, clients in my other life i am a banker I, I have been a banker for all my life and then i just decided to go into academia so i just want out of interest if you thought of maybe venturing into the export market for flowers um, no i haven't because um that's more of a bigger scale not yes. not that the ambition is 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 limited um yeah. but i i the 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 scale that of of um being able to grow is mm -hmm. probably being more in the diversification part of indoor flower indoor plants all at the right. moment, I do work with with farmers um, in in the Moses Drift, where I am able to access your in the indoor plants on a on a, on a bigger scale. No, so okay. the export part, um, I haven't really thought about it to that extent. But okay. we are national at the moment, um, so we do cater to um, Eastern Cape, where we do have our indoor plants so there for for um, Transnet. So, so it's more of a national part of it, the diversification part of, of, of nationalizing it rather than mm. export. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good to know that. Well, the farmer is here. The <laughs> farmer is here. Maybe she can also venture into flower, flower farming. Anyway. <laughs> would be uh, interesting. It would be interesting, true. It's just something that, you know, just came to mind as mm. we were talking. Is Boitumelo here now? Um, so Mila, so we can ask her also about uh, the business and how she decided. No, but Mila is not here. And it seems like today is is the day for the ladies in uh, flowers in and uh, the ladies, the ladies of, of the soil. Estimates. I think that's complimentary. <laughs> that's what you uh, both of you have in common. So Sorry. <laughs> let's let's just rock and roll with it and just enjoy. I'm enjoying the stories. I'm enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, how you guys, uh, both of you have come to um, doing your business and starting them. And yeah, I think it's, it's quite interesting. Um, so let's, let's get more, let's get to know more of Komoto and Pam. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Henrik. Okay, um, thank you, Helena. Um, thank you, guys. Um, I just, um, I understand that entrepreneurship, it's not for everyone. Well, I'm not an entrepreneur to start with, okay? But I'll get there. But I just want to find out from you guys. Um, um, for much, um, I just want to understand what was the key driving force for you to be an entrepreneur? What gave you the drive, the courage, the push in order for you to actually start your own business? Um, you know, that's quite an interesting question that has so many facets to it when people mm. are asked this mm. question. Um, but for me, I think more than anything, to a certain extent, I did know that I didn't want a nine to five and I wanted to own my own time, you know, yeah. so, so, so the driving force of it is, is the ability to own your own time and make the decisions that um, are beneficial to you and being able to, to maneuver around, around okay. the decisions that, bases, that, that are basis for you. But um, also, add in addition to that, the driving forces is the, the achievements that you that you that you get on a weekly basis. Whether it's an email that mm. has created a, a, an order, whether it's someone complimenting you um, to say I love your flowers, you know that's that that drives you. No matter how small or big it is, we obviously do want the big part of it, <laughs> but even the small the small gestures and the small um experiences that you give people really really i think for me that that drives me to to be more consistent and have the more the, the tenacity and the determination to actually grow yeah mm. okay. yeah okay. okay talking about nine to five i'm just i'm just curious i just want to ask you this question were you an employee before and then when oh, did you I, realize I, I, Yes. Yeah. So, so um, I started in retail and um, worked at, at, at um, Jenny Button store for a while part time. 
Then I actually wrote, um, worked, I don't know if they're your competitors now, I was a student advisor at um, Midrand Graduate Institute, which now I think they're called Pearson's. Um, okay. So, yeah, so I was a student advisor. So those were my two jobs in my life. Then, yeah, I, <laughs> I left that um, about um, 11, 11 years ago and have been doing this since. Okay. Okay. Great stuff. Great stuff. Mm, Interesting. Great stuff. Yeah. Interesting mm. indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Pam, uh, for you, what are the driving uh, forces uh, that forced you to actually, that gave you the courage to actually start and be an entrepreneur and start your own business in farming? I, I think you used the right word there, forced. Um, because I, I, I like I say, I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't intend to fully jump in um, as yet. But um, if I can backtrack a bit, just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, w when much uh, earlier in, in my life, when I was much younger, Helena, <laughs> when I, I, and I was still married, we used to run a very successful business. This is back in the 90s, and I, I tasted the freedom of running yes. one's own business. And I mm. loved it. It was an extremely successful business. And I always wanted to get back into owning my own business. Uh, but, you know, life happens and you get sidetracked and I detour mm. a bit. And uh, fast forward to present day, I was um, comfortable in the corporate sector and I worked uh, for um, very magnificent uh, big companies. Uh, I, and then wh while I was working at General Electric, I'm not sure if you know GE. Yes, I, yes. I, 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 this is that's when I acquired the piece of land with a plan to get into farming slowly as a part-time mm. gig until I am quite settled and then develop it into a, my long-term retirement plan uh, and then I got retrenched at GE oh. and that's when I thought okay I need to equip myself a little bit better so I'm a mental health nurse um, professionally mm -hmm. always wise but working in corporate and I decided then that okay I need to get something that will anchor me into running my own business so I registered with Mill Park and started doing business administration uh, still planning long term to get into running my business and then mm. I went on to get back into corporate and I thought okay it's gonna take I, I'll give myself about five to eight years um, while I'm settling uh, my business and running, uh, doing my, my my nine to five, but that wasn't to be. Um, one year, nine months into the job, I got retrenched again. So <laughs> that sure. was two retrenchments in three years. And so farming was calling your name, eh? Mm. Definitely. Mm. Farming was calling your name. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the decision was fast uh, and forced. So I had to decide now, if I keep going back onto the the wheel and trying yeah. to get back into corporate it's it's just going to be too tedious i might as well just put my uh my, my my shoes on and overalls on and just get rolling so that's how i managed to just dig into it mm. yeah mm. Well, great stuff but no regrets at all <laughs> no regrets yeah. No regrets, yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Yeah, very so, so... fascinating, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. But we've got Wittumelo joining us now. Finally, okay. welcome, Wittumelo. So, um, you guys, you. <laughs> so you would be able to pose some questions to her as well. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, we can, we can, we can just uh, take a step back. Just, just, just to understand what uh, Bitumelo's business is all about. I understand it's an e-commerce, right? If ever you don't feel like uh, going to the shops, you just, you know, yeah. click, 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 stuff gets delivered. Boo ha, right? So, 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 we just, can you just tell us uh, a bit more about your, your <laughs> yeah. business? Okay, um, Red Puppy was established in October of twenty nineteen. We are an e-commerce business 
we focus mainly on small to medium enterprises um, to give them a more diverse mm. um, customer okay. uh, market and to give them a pl platform where they'd be able to access customers that they would not necessarily mm. have access to. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to know more? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, Feel free to please. share. Feel free to share. If you've got more to share, that's okay, okay. as well. Um, us focusing on small businesses does not eliminate the chance of working with a big establishment. Bigger businesses, or, okay. Yeah, yes. It does not necessarily mean that we won't. Um, those are always open for new opportunities. The objective is to create an ecosystem that feeds everybody. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. um, Bridumelo, how did you come up with the name of the company? The name of the company? <laughs> just okay. um, yeah. I didn't like it. I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't like the name at all, but my partner liked it. Um, the idea behind the business or the name rather would be the guiding dog. You know how guiding mm -hmm. dogs will mm -hmm. lead the blind? Yeah. So yeah. that's how the name came Guide about. Dog. Okay. Yeah. It's a very catchy the, the, name. I like it. I, I had issues with it, but I've grown to love it. It's very nice. It's very unusual, okay. very punkish. Very it's unique. Out of this yeah. world. Very unique. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Well done for that. Thank you, Helen. Yeah. So and then, um, you no, know, it's fine. You can, you, you can, you can take over, Ele. I was just going to ask the same question to uh, Komoso about uh, coming up with the name of your business. I know it looks like it's a derivative of your your surname, but you could tell us more about Manolo Flowers. Oh no, no. Um, Manolo is actually my son's name. Um, so it means it means god is with us um okay. it's a spanish name but we are very black <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, god is with us in spanish so i just it, it it was more about the meaning of it rather than yes. thinking about the name per se but yeah it's right. attached to my son so it's not related to your surname no it's not related to my surname <laughs> okay, interesting. And we, uh, Pam, how did you come up with the flower uh, business? Does it have a name? The farming business. Yes, uh, yes, it's called Carries Rock. Carries so, Rock. C A R I. C H A. C H A R I S Rock. Okay. So, um, I I am a, a, a very spiritual Christian. Okay. And my daughter's name is Sheena, which is Hebrew for God's grace. All right. Uh, and I wanted, when I acquired uh, the piece of land, I wanted to name it after her. And I prayed and took a lot, a lot of, a long time thinking about mm. it and just listening in to hear, tuning into where God was leading me with it. So I uh, decided to, I didn't want to name it Sheena but it, I wanted it to relate to her. And right. I eventually decided um, to name it Charis because Charis is uh, the Greek word for grace. Uh, All right. It also means kindness and it means life. And All right. with farming, it, farming is the life uh, for, sure. for all human beings uh, and for all nature. Uh, so I thought Caris Rock because Rock is Christ. He is yes. our Rock. So it's uh, I named the 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 small holding itself the Rock of Grace, which is Caris Rock. And then All I right. just decided I might as well just uh, register the business with that name. Okay. All right. Wonderful. I just like the way all you ladies are so intentional about your the the path that you are following. It's not like it's haphazard. It's all very intentional, mm. very structured, mm. yeah. and that that makes me as a as a lady, as a woman, very proud of you. Yeah. Um, let me just ask um, Baitimelo if she's here. 
Yes, I am here. Okay. Um, how did you raise capital for your venture uh, to me? Um, we put together our savings and took loans. So savings we did not loans. get any investors at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. it's self-funded. Yeah. Yes, it's self-funded. And no, you haven't had, you, you have not had a need to approach the government support programs? Uh, we did during the COVID relief funding only. situation, but that didn't okay. work. All right. Yeah, and it was the only time that we had at the time approached any organization for funding. All right. And it is quite um, stable and well funded as it is. Right now, yes. Um, we still have a long way to go. Yes. Um, entrepreneurship is not easy. True. at all but so far so good so far so good we are, we are, i'm glad to hear yeah. that okay uh, uh komoto same question how did you raise capital for your venture for for the flower business um it's on my side it's also self um self-funded um mm -hmm. before before i actually left the the, the student advisor job um i was <laughs> This is actually quite bad. I was taking my breaks and going to deliver flowers um, with my sister and then come back, you know. So so it's 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 self-funded, no loans um, on my side that were taken at all. Um, once I did receive my first client, which was Holiday in, in Rosebank, um, mm -hmm. they were they took also the opportunity with me as a young black um, woman to to offer me office space um i guess that was also an advantage of on their side for their scoring but it was also an advantage on my side so, mm -hmm. so that office space um equipped um the running of of manola flowers on the back seat um so yeah, i didn't have any loans um okay. that i took on all right so is this the long term uh, medium to long term plan that the continue will continue to self fund and not seek any additional funding from outside sources oh yes um i think it's a long term i think um being able to 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 avoid the loans as as, more, as possible um mm -hmm. is 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 my intention um but but that's the beauty also of of being in corporate and the companies that i'm equipped with they have they have given grants also um throughout the years that that uh, are able to equip um us with your e-commerce like um Bipimelo. so i've never really mm -hmm. um used um the business money to 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 have the bigger stuff like our website was also sponsored by a corporate company our oh, our, our our um offices us are sponsored by a corporate company one of our delivery vehicles was sponsored because so so it's been i've been quite blessed um mm, you've been very very fortunate yeah. And, mm. and that was the intentional part of positioning it in the corporate space because there is right. a lot of benefit but become a beneficiary of yes, when yes. you service them on a consistent corporate social yes exactly All right. corporate so it's part of their corporate social responsibility corporate now supporting you yes it's a very good positioning um komoto thank it's you very yeah it's a very good positioning of your business and i've learned something i really have learned something thank you. and yeah thank you then uh, lastly uh, pam how do you raise capital how do you raise capital i know farming um, is very capital intensive very mm. yeah farming is both capital and labor intensive yes um, it's not easy but um because i had while i was working i was using part of my salary to um, fund the, the whatever little projects that we were doing on mm. the on the pot but it, because it was very small scale i i, I didn't think I, I personally also just like homoto didn't want to have to borrow money to All right. 
to, to run the farming. Um, solely because partly I, I own the land outright. Yes. And I didn't want to have to uh, tie it down tie to it down. anything. Okay. Um, so I, I thought, let me just keep pushing and pressing. Mm. Hence the, the initial thought of wanting to work long term while establishing the business. Um, but after having been retrenched, I had to try and readjust my thinking and, and see how I, I want to do this. So I'm currently in the process of trying to, to see if I can get funding. I'm still busy putting together the tedious paperwork. Mm, and mm. I am very, very grateful that, um, well, it's, it's not coincidence, it's God's timing because the modules, all the modules that I'm doing this semester with Mill Park, they complement each other and they actually help me a lot with what I am doing with the business. <laughs> like the entrepreneurship, we are doing the business plan and it is exactly and at the, the time while I'm working on a business. Yes, while mm. I'm doing a business plan for Caris Rock. And Wonderful. I also got associated with um, uh, an up and coming NGO. They invited me to sit on the board. So it's, it's called Accelerate Africa Development. So right. it focuses on empowering uh, up and coming Africans in business, especially in farming. So it, it's still also a, a new um, NGO, but it's already established, it's registered. And part of what the NGO does is also assisting with sourcing funding, funding for, okay. for projects um, okay. in, in Africa. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting, Ken. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Um, Somila Hendrik and um, myself, we are very happy about the contribution mm. that our modules are making to you, especially entrepreneurship being my yeah. On module and you talking to the assessments that <laughs> we are currently putting you through you guys through I thought you'd be complaining but I'm glad <laughs> well, that you're learning something if, I, if, I, if I should add on that um, I'm also <laughs> doing entrepreneurship and yes it is also <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. and, but but as Pam said really really it's it's it really open stretches your mind and how to to tackle it and how to 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 get around it you know because things like business plan we usually the first yes. thing that comes to mind is to outsource it mm -hmm. yes know, i know a lot of people and that now, have outsourced it and yeah. now depending on the marks i will get um i'll do it myself <laughs> <laughs> okay it is a good that, to go through. that's your template going forward you will just use that business plan that we put you through for any other um, um projects that you want to initiate even if it's business expansion that's your template you can, yeah, because because you can just yeah. add on uh, to the one that you you have already developed yourself and yes you are right most people outsource the business plan and it's such an expensive uh, exercise, but I'm glad. I'm very glad that we are helping. And Hendrik is the one who put in the accounting module. So kudos to yes. you, Hendrik. Yeah, yes. he's the one who inputted the, <laughs> the accounting um, element of um, entrepreneurship. Thank you, yeah. ladies. Hendrik, okay. I'll, I'll hand over to you this time. Okay. Thank you so much, Helena. I must say, interesting times, interesting stories. Uh, we learn as we go. And I like the fact that you ladies are, are actually empowering other women to actually, you know, start their mm. own businesses, you know? So, 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 so thank you so much, so, so much for that. And I'm sure all of you guys would agree with me if I say um, uh, revenue, it's one of the contributing factor mm. in the success of a business, right? and that is supported by a good customer base right mm. so so now i just want to find out from you Humozo and pam um how do you build a successful customer base maybe um, you can start with okay. Um, okay. <laughs> i my business is still very young so we don't have the luxury of uh you know a, a budget for 
uh, marketing or any other way. Yeah. So w while we were still budding and which we still are, um, I, I, I just go personally into the different uh, prospective clients and nothing speaks better than a sample. So mm. when, yeah. when, when I go to market my product, I carry a sample. So when we had abundant spinach, I would carry bundles of spinach and just drive up and show them. And as long as the product is good, they aren't um, clients that won't take it. They will True. always want it because mm -hmm. fresh produce is always in demand. In demand. So that's okay. how I get my clients. I'll just hop from one spa to another and to a fruit and veg supplier somewhere locally. And interestingly, um, I started getting walk-ins. So just mere nice. word of mouth uh, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are tucked away it's a small holding in in, in an agricultural area but uh word of mouth just travels very fast it does. so i've had i've had sometimes to turn away people just uh a few days ago i had to turn away somebody that turned up where after dark and they were banging mm. on our gates they want vegetables um mm. so mostly those walk-ins are informal vendors all and right they are big buyers they, they are, are big, really buyers. big buyers okay. yes Wonderful. i have a professor who who actually mentors me because i didn't know anything about uh kale uh yes. i wasn't i wasn't very confident growing Into it all right but uh this professor Phineas is not a mill park professor he he supplied me with the seedlings and he, yes. and then i asked him to mentor me and the first thing he told me was, if you want to make money, stay away from supplying supermarkets. And I thought, what is he talking about? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and his <laughs> advice was that I should concentrate on um, vendors, street vendors. Yeah. And that's, that's where he gets a bulk of his revenue from. So mm. I, I, I don't yet concentrate 100% on them, but I make it kind of like 50-50%. So I supply mm -hmm. the supermarkets and then I supply them as well. All right. Kale is a very hardy plant, eh? It's, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a hardy plant. It's um, fairly easy to grow. It is much easier mm. than spinach. I was surprised. Much easier than spinach. Yeah, it's a very spinach. hardy plant. Mm, mm. 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 All right. Yeah. I'm glad um, that just by coincidence or by God's grace, there you were someone advising you to um, venture into another cash crop. Um, yes. But, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, to me, to me, uh, yes. Hendrik, I think I your question now will be directed. She's oh, she's not here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so my, my, my question would, would then be directed to Humucho. How okay. did you, how did she build a successful uh, a customer base? I think Pam said it all um, with regards to starting by going yourself and actually mm. introducing yourself and your business to your mm. potential client or the, the niche market that you that you would want to venture in. That's how I started. I used to buy 29 rand a time for more to call um, facilities managers or companies to to just set up a meeting with them and um, if they accepted then I'd have to spend more money to, because I'd have to give them um, a complimentary arrangement for them to see the look and feel of our arrangements so so yeah. it started like that and it spiraled to um, once you give professional service and a product mm -hmm. there is definitely no way that um the receiver is not going to receive it with the good intention that you are actually giving it so right. so, so 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 yeah that's how it started and referrals have been the biggest biggest mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay. and one thing that i did do intentionally was should um a client take um, order flowers for another person, I would intentionally go there and deliver it myself and yes. give that person that receives the flower my business card and my business card 
and and be able to to tell them more about the business. So this was before I had the drivers and and all that the system going. I used to do the delivery. I used to do all the the arrangements and going to meet the people that are receiving the flowers. So they too can be my clients once after they've enjoyed the flowers. You can never go wrong with footwork. Doing the footwork yourself. <laughs> Yeah. From, yeah. yeah, meeting the people, walking to the people's places personally and meeting with them. Who is does the magic? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Henry. Okay. Um, I'm sure um, with the recent unrest that uh, were happening all over our country, uh, which was looting, um, I just want to know what were any of your businesses affected by looting? If so, how have you then risen for uh, um, from uh, the the setback before the looting that happened? Can I start with uh, well, for Mutsu? Well, um, for me, it 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 didn't really affect it to 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 on a on a on a um, prolonged basis. It affected mm -hmm. probably three to four days because the employees couldn't come through to work. Oh, and we, okay. we were unable to go to the market, but um, with regards to vandalizing our our our, our equipment, well, the store that we have, um, no, that didn't affect us. Um, just operations stopped for about three three to four days um, in order for everything to settle down. Okay, right. okay. And then for you, Pam, did you experience any looting? No, not at all. So we are tucked away in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> Oh yeah. Where yeah. people can, can can even get the So the workers no. are on site. The workers are on site, yes. All right. Oh, that's nice. That's um okay. so it, it's it, 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 we are affected by different kinds of issues rather than um mm. That um, and none of our clients also were affected, so everything has ah, just gone on. Um, oh, the right. only thing that affects us is the seasons and the climate. <laughs> yeah, like everyone. So else. looting was basically yeah. So, yeah. So looting was basically uh, something that you would watch on TV, but never affected yeah. you at all. <laughs> yeah. So it well, affected okay. me in my personal life or in other ways with family yeah. and uh, rel yes. relatives and friends, but not directly as a business. No. No. Okay. okay. All right, Helen. Yes. Uh, um, just sorry to disturb you, um, guys. Um, I'm just also looking. I'm um, very much aware of our time. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, I think we're having such a brilliant conversation, and mm. I'm, I'm actually just inspired. So um, I think um, I know Komodo has um, an urgent place that he she needs to be at. Yes. So yeah. I think let's um, try and wrap up. Um, what we have done, um, Komoto, uh, Pam, and Wendubela, is that we've added um, your, um, your business websites on our chats. Um, so we want people to um, direct people to your businesses and um, to get in touch with you and mm -hmm. order flowers, order vegetables, yes, vegetables. and buy from, <laughs> from your online vegetables. stores. Yes, yes. <laughs> so... Um, I think now, because we also have promised people that have, uh, are joining us this morning that by half past 11, we would be yes. done. So yeah. what I'm going to do now is really just call on um, Saramit to come through. And I really want to thank you, ladies, for um, for being a part of, of, of this. And we will let Humuto go. Um, and with Dumelo, you can please, you can still stay. Um, and um, yeah, so thank you very much. And Helen and Hendrik, you guys are rock stars. I'm so happy thank to you. be working with you on this yeah, project. You know, um, Samila, they say they say time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, yes. time, time, time flies. So. Yes, I really yes. love. <laughs> yeah, I really love these ladies' fashion. <laughs> the way their dream is so clear. I've learned something, and I've been inspired, especially being the lecturer in charge of entrepreneurship. I'm really just mm. pitching myself on the back. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, it. and you should definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Samila and um, Helena and, and Hendrik and everybody. Um, we I have to do I have to go at the moment, but it's been really great as usual to be on this platform. And um, yeah, see you soon. See All the you. best. Thank yes. you, All the cool. best. Um, okay, bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Um, Sarame will be joining us shortly. Um, he's creating. So, um, Pam, like, I think uh, I've got a different take now on farming. My husband and I have a, a little, <laughs> we started a little farming in our backyard. We kind of yeah. have like cabbage and spinach growing, but it's taken so long. I'm not very patient with it, but he's yeah. been taking it. So I think I'm going to call you for some pointers. <laughs> anytime, anytime. You are on the right yeah. track, by the way. That's the way to do it. I Thank love you. growing things. And for your own information, Pam, I'm also a closet farmer. I love growing things, but unfortunately I don't have space, but I grow my own vegetables. In my oh, little corner, awesome. I grow my own spinach, my own rocket, my own coriander, wow. anything that I can do, shallots. And uh -huh. um, yeah, I don't buy that. I make yeah. my own fresh salad every day. <laughs> I find it very difficult nice. to take out money and purchase vegetables. It's difficult. <laughs> All right, Sarami is here. Yes. Over to you, Sarami. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, colleagues. These two ladies, or three ladies, I'm really proud of them. And yes, from the institution, we are. I mean, when I hear such stories, for me, uh, it demonstrates our commitment to, to create entrepreneurship, uh, to make it success in the country. And for me, I'm really honored to have them, uh, to be our alumni. So, and I think one, one of the things that I learned is that we, there's a risk of fear, or we, we, re, we are fearing, uh, I don't know, unknown things when it comes to entrepreneurship. And for these three ladies to, you know, take up their nine to five jobs and say, you know what, I'm going for this. For me, I'm really proud of, of, of that. And so Mila, I mean, we need to bring them more, uh, maybe next year as our guest lecturers, maybe for 30 minutes, just to empower, especially our ladies, black ladies in particular. For me, I'm really proud of them. So that they can uh, motivate our students and they can see, you know, when you have this 100 mark assignment entrepreneurship, it prepares you. To the real world because i think most of our students they don't see that end result or the aim of a particular model i mean even accounting Hendrik, they can see how all of this thing fits in and by i think thursday we also discuss uh, financial literacy how they can submit their financials how to do a budget you know all those small little items that our entrepreneurs need to learn i think it will be really helpful and the other thing is their, their resilience to throughout all these turbulences, all these challenges, finance, uh, you know, all sorts of things that, I mean, to me, such to run a business is not that easy. There's a lot that goes into place. And for, for me, for, for their commitment and being resilient throughout all of this, it, it really plays out. And this, this spirit, I think, uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship, it's, we need to embrace it more. And so, Mira, we need to feature this, uh, the businesses, maybe in our website or in our magazines going forward so that we can demonstrate people our products, our, our, our students. So on behalf of the team, guys, I'm really, really proud of you. And the School of Commerce would like, or would like to thank you for your time. I know it's hectic, it's busy during the week, during working hours but you took your time to participate on this discussion for me i really appreciate it all the best and if there's anything okay so Mila and myself yeah, i'm always available then we can take it from there but from the bottom of my heart thank you so much what about you so it's only a pleasure Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarame, and thanks to our guest speakers. On Thursday, we will be having a panel discussion with our academics. As Sarame has touched a bit on them, they will be giving us um, the, the tips uh, on how to journey 
on our journeys to being entrepreneurs. So uh, I would like to invite everyone on this platform to join us on Thursday and have those pointers and those tips in this um, journey to entrepreneurship. Um, yes, so thank you everyone and I'll see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye all.